Hello, I'm the Resident Cartographer, and this is the ninth video in my Fallout 76 Post Wastelanders main quest series. We are here at Morgantown Airport, where we finished up last time. In fact, I ran all the way over here to make sure I was at the same location. And it is now time for us to get down to Charleston to AVR Medical to see about Dr. Claire Hudson's research. So, let's head that way. Now we're going to head straight through Morgantown, and we're going to head straight down the highway to get there. Uh, this means we're going to be running through some fairly ghoul-infested territory here, so that might be kind of interesting. Let's see how things go. Got my Somerset Special here. And I've been putting points into pistols, although I think mainly into accuracy with pistols. Not so much into damage, which is definitely something I'll need to focus on, but... I just figured it's time to change things up. I typically always go with riflemen. Uh, let's try something different. Well... Nothing yet. Okay, that was the least number of ghouls I've ever seen coming through Morgantown. That was really strange. Okay. Uh, VTU here on our left. There's the Mama Dolce's plant on the right with the hidden Jap- or sorry, not Japanese, Chinese intelligence place, uh, base beneath it. That right there is the source of all of the uh, Liberator robots you see running around little green things that scream Chinese at you. Oop, here we go. Ooh. Yeah, I'm hearing more of them. Jeez. Okay, so don't try using the scope when they're running at me. They got it. Alright, <clears throat> gonna just go through this breach in the wall here. And that right there, well, this is kind of like a Y, and the highway just goes right through the middle. This farm is a farm you'll visit uh, if you're working for Bevy Ridge over at the uh, tar uh, the tattoo parlor over there. Well, the uh, hidden speakeasy beneath the tattoo parlor, that is. Just past this little farm. It's got a good quantity of plants that you can harvest here. It's going to be a pretty peaceful highway, so I will bring you back if anything happens. Okay, so we are approaching the small town around Greg's uh, Mine Supply. No name for this town given anywhere. And when I say town, I'm talking about, what is this, five houses and uh, Greg's Mine Supply? So... A lot of scorched in this area, so be aware of that. Alright. We'll just keep right on moving. So this rock slide here uh, either was potentially before the war or uh, right after it. I'm preferential to the idea that it was right after the bombs. And I say that uh, for a reason I'll show you up here. By the way, that sign is like right in the middle of the road. <laughs> Look at that. I guess you could say the road shifted and so maybe that's what the case is right there. But we go past these rocks and you see that they were attempting to clear things up. And the reason I think that that uh, rock slide happened on the day of the bombs and not before that is because of a car that's in the field up here in Helvetia, which appears to me to have been just speeding down this road and went straight off to the side. And I don't see that how that could have happened with the rock slide right there. I think that happened. They were going down this when the bombs were happening, and they ended up plowing through the fence here and then smashing up on top of a stump over there. Helvetia is a really interesting town. I've made a lore video on it. I suggest you check it out. It's uh, This is very closely based on the real world Helvetia in terms of the, uh, the general layout of the main part of the town. And also even some of the structures are almost copied exactly from the real world versions. The street names are also copied from the real versions. 
some of the signage as well. It's also a town where there appears to have been a significant amount of uh, vote fraud taking place, or a plan to vote fraud because the election uh, ended up happening after, well, the time of the election ended up being after the bombs came down. But in a town of probably no more than a couple hundred, there are something like, and I can't remember exact, the exact number of hands, something like 20-something vote uh, ballot printing machines. Okay, somebody's shooting at me. There they are. There we go. Okay. And, uh, having just passed Helvetia, that means we're getting close to Summersville. Well, first we have to go past the, uh, Tiger Water Treatment Plant. And, uh, the Poseidon Energy Substation. Yeah, the Investigate the Trailer miscellaneous quest that just popped up is to check on, uh, the trailer of Dr. Amy- Oh, not doctor, I don't think, but, uh, scientist Amy Carey. She lives in that- she used to live in that trailer over there. Uh... She is now dead. We can actually find her body at the Cowspot's Creamery. What is up with all this smoke? What is this? Well, whatever it was, it cleared. Uh, this Tiger Water Treatment Plant, though, was uh, at one point occupied by a group of uh, raiders known as the Reavers. I believe that they were killed off by the Mistress of Mystery because of how close this is to uh, Riverside Manor. But yeah, Doctor, again, I don't know if it was a doctor or not. Amy Carey, a uh, scientist who is working on a system to detect uh, scorched contamination of the environment. The Brotherhood was hunting for her. She didn't want to be captured. Uh, she didn't want to be part of any organization or be forced to do anything against her will. So she fled to the Cowspots Creamery to hopefully meet up with her boyfriend, Jeff Nakamura. Unfortunately, she was killed at the Cowspots Creamery where her body can still be found today. Okay. And what is that? Super Mutants. Well, okay, so yeah, we are getting very close to Summersville, which is controlled by the Blood Eagles. But, looks like we got some Super Mutants to deal with in the meantime. I've always loved the, uh... The Flight Helmet Super Mutants. Or Flight Cap, I should say. With the goggles. Oh. I know I said I'm trying to go away from riflemen, but this is the most accurate ranged weapon I've got at the moment. Now that my Somerset Special is out of bullets. Jeez. And I am not very accurate with it. Stimpak, come on, there we go. There we go. Okay, I think that cleared their little checkpoint here. Yeah, I don't see any more. Let's grab what they've got on them. Gunpowder. Should be taking the hunting rifles as well to break them down to get the... Uh, the mod recipes, but I don't want to be carrying those things at the moment. Because I don't want it to stop anywhere to break them down. Uh, we're getting close to Priblos Curios. Which is a place that uh, specialized... Oh. Privilege Curios specialized in making fake, uh, like, uh, crypto zoology items. Jeez. Okay, that seems like that should have hit. There we go. And hopefully, before too long, well, it's gonna be a while. I was gonna say, hopefully, before too long, this character won't have to fight raiders like that, because, uh, raider scum like her are part of, uh, the crater raiders. Or Raiders of the Crater. There we go, Priblos Curios. They got caught up in the whole, uh, Sheep Squatch hunt. Again, I've also made a uh, lore video on Summersville. You should check that out. There's a little motorcycle wreck here that I think happened on the day of the bombs. Again, we got a weird site here with these, uh, automated printed ballots. That, if I had a better scope... Well, actually, I've still got my Somerset Special, right? Where is that? It's 
So you can see right there, endorsement for President of the United States, I, the automated voting system of the Appalachian Territory, endorse this candidate for president. So, I don't know what the hell that's all about. There was supposed to be, it's a little, so far as I know, it's just not implemented yet. But of course, this has been multiple years that it hasn't been implemented yet. Uh, a quest called Race for the Presidency or something like that. Uh, and I think that's related to that, potentially. It could also just be related to uh, uh, Thomas Eckhart, the former Secretary of Agriculture, seizing the presidency um, uh, within the White Spring Bunker. And he used the uh, automated voting system to get himself elected there, so that could be related to that as well. I am not going to claim the workshop at the Lakeside Cabins because I don't need it right now. Should be some feral ghouls holding that place, I believe. Maybe some scorched. It looks like feral ghouls. And I should probably have my shotgun ready because I would not be surprised if they come charging at me here in just a second. Okay. These lakeside cabins are on the lakeside of uh, Summersville Lake, based on a real lake, the largest lake in West Virginia. In this case, it's been drained by the destruction of the Summersville Lake Dam on Christmas Day 2082. Uh, that right there, what is it? That's the town of New Gad, which is based on the town of Gad, which is actually submerged beneath the waters of uh, Summersville Lake. Uh, <laughs> An interesting supposition, because typically when uh, the Army Corps of Engineers builds a dam, they name the lake for the closest town. Now, Summersville is currently the closest town to Summersville Lake, but the town of Gad is actually beneath the waves of Summersville Lake. So the fact that they didn't name it Lake Gad or Gad Lake was because, and again, I think this is just a joke, but they would have to call the dam the Gad Dam, and I don't think that they want people uh, mistaking that as... Some sort of uh, blasphemy. <laughs> okay. Oh, rad rats. Okay. Always nice to have a shotgun for close range stuff. So yeah, these are the uh, Summersville Lake docks. I have no idea why they had docks this large. I mean, they have that even that large tugboat out there. This is not a large lake, even in real life. I mean, it's it's the largest lake in West Virginia, but it's not like it's connected to anything. Uh, and it's not an industrial lake. There's no factories on this lake. There's just that uh, that set of docks there. I, I don't really know, again, why it's such a sophisticated setup there. Over there, we got all the uh, manor houses. Uh, the richest folks in Appalachia live down there. And that right there is, I think that's Riverside. Riverside Manor, the home of the Mistress of Mystery. Okay, and uh, here we are at the border of Charleston. And we are going to cross the dam. Well, what's left of it at least. Which is also occupied by the Scorched. There we go. I know there's still the... Scorched over there in the uh, dam control complex thing. Let me just go take them out real quick. Let's do that. Okay. Oh, shoot. Started to reload without checking. How many more I would have to kill? Okay. Alright. With that done, let's head back out this way. And cross the dam. Alright. There's the golden dome of the, uh... Of the West Virginia State House. West Virginia Capitol Building is probably the actual name of it. Oh, shoot. Trap. <laughs> That was nice. What the heck? Okay, stem pack. Jump the hole. Where are you? Oh, 
Okay. Is that everybody? That's everybody. Alright, let's go take a look at that note on, out here on the bridge. Cursed. Pulled the short straw with this guard duty. This place gives me the creeps. Sure, the water's almost all gone, but that doesn't change the fact we flooded this whole city not too long ago. Cynthia always told me each murder brings you a ghost that follows you. I don't mind having a few, even a dozen, but this many? It ain't right. So yeah, the raiders uh, flooded Charleston. Ooh, there's a Grafton monster. <laughs> anyway, let's keep on moving. I killed all these guys. I guess they don't have any loot on them. That's unfortunate. I would have liked to get some more 10 mil bullets, but... Uh... Oh well. Okay. Now that we're on this side of the, uh, the river, we're going to start heading west. And I'm not sure of the enemies we're going to come across. Maybe a couple feral ghouls. Now nah, we're, right, we're on the right road here. We're also near the uh, Charleston Fire Department, which was the home of the Fire Breathers. Oh, just entered the Ash Heap. The uh, Fire Breathers were the elite force of the responders. We will uh, we read about them a little bit last time, or at least read the uh, the note that they wanted people to join. Uh, yeah, they uh, were the also the anti-scorched force of the responders because they already wore uh, environmental protective gear that protected them from the scorched plague, but there simply weren't enough of them. Uh, the reason why we just started Overseer's Mission is because there's a log here at the station, but we're not actually here for the station. We're heading to, towards AVR Medical, as I stated before. This bridge here was washed out with flood. Uh, it is home to super mutants a lot of the time. It looks like right now scorched. There are also typically snallygasters that you can find down below that bridge. All right, and now that we're over here, we're just going to follow this uh, elevated road. Should see how I'm doing in terms of ammunition on these things. Because we are about to enter a scorched infested hospital. Okay, this first room has been emptied. Let's keep on moving. I don't know about... Whoa, pitchfork. She was most definitely holding a hand sickle. Uh, just impact. There we go. Okay. They're all dead. I think, at least. Yes, okay. Time to drop down through the floor here. Uh, let's see. What's the best way to do this? I mean, I know that there's a proper way to go down. I'm just going through the floor. Okay. Uh, Radridges. There we are. Whoa. I have never seen a Radroach take a bullet before and ask for more. Okay, let's see what's in here. Okay, uh... Nothing. I mean, like a little bit of junk. I'll take the duct tape. Anyway, uh, let's keep moving. Head downstairs. And here we are in the laboratory of Dr. Claire Hudson. And we've got a nice picture of the responders here. Uh, that's uh, Jeff Nakamura right there. Maria Chavez. I think that's Maria right there. I think maybe Dr. Claire Hudson? I'm not sure. Oh, Melody Larkin maybe right there. And then uh, Sanjay Kumar. Anyway, uh, AVR Medical Laboratory Terminal. Inoculation Project Overview. Purpose. Produce a vaccine against the mutagenic effect known as the Scorch Plague. Method. Extract blood samples from three candidate creatures observed to be more resistant to the scorched mutagenic effect. Use blood sample analysis to create synthetic antibodies. Candidate creature, feral ghoul. Addendum. 
Project stalled until replacement type T fuse can be acquired. Request filed with the responder's quartermaster to obtain replacement. Project journal. Okay, we've got, uh, this is from July to no November of 2096. We'll start with the oldest, July 6th, 2096. Okay, here we go. One brave doctor taking on the mysteries of the Scorched. How heroic. Truth is, I'm alone. I'm more than a little terrified, and I'm skeptical this whole crazy idea will even work. I think the fundamentals are sound enough, but once I start analyzing the Scorched DNA, who knows what I'll find or whether I'll even understand it. But I have to try it. If I don't, all the people I care about are as good as dead. And if the Scorched start to spread, I don't even want to think about it. At least I can be grateful that we found this lab. It has everything I need, provided I can get all this equipment working. Hey, I got this terminal reprogrammed, so that's a pretty good start. Speaking of which, I better start writing that analysis program. No time to... Damn, there's that scratching noise again. I thought we cleared this place out, but I swear there's more moving around in the upper levels. Guess I better work fast. Okay. August 1st, 2096. Making good progress overall, at least with the preparation. Got the analysis program finished, and then, after no small amount of yelling, cursing, and kicking things, I finally got the terminal and the symptomatic talking to each other. Well, there's a mischaracterization. It would be more correct to say that I got the terminal to scream orders at the symptomatic, and I got the symptomatic to obey them. Now I get to pour over hundreds of first-hand accounts, personal observations, and any other information we've gathered relating to how the Scorched Plague has been affecting the local wildlife. If I'm lucky, a tenth of it might be useful. So, now we come to it. The crux of my theory. If I can identify the creatures that seemed least affected by the Scorched Plague, then maybe, just maybe, I can figure out why. Then, with luck, synthetic antibodies might not be far behind. August 12th, 2096. Short entry today. Why? Because I really only did one thing and it wasn't research. No, I spent my day hiding from a pack of Scorched that invaded the hospital this morning. Most of them stayed up on the ground floor, but a few wandered down here. It's a good thing I heard them, because I barely had time to hole up in the closet when they started searching around the lab. It occurs to me that we know almost nothing about the Scorched. What motivates them? Do they eat? Why are they hostile towards everything that isn't one of them? Eventually the Scorched move on, and by eventually I mean nine hours later. I never want to set foot in that storage closet again. September 2nd, 2096. Thank God for automation. I'm one woman doing the job of a small research team. If not for the computers and machinery here, this project wouldn't have a chance. Speaking of the project, the creature that seems to show the most resilience to the Scorched Plague are the feral ghouls. If I can get a blood sample from one, it'd be a simple matter to load it into the centrifuge and run the analysis program. With the resulting data, synthesizing antibodies should be a pretty straightforward process. Add the synthetic antibodies to the suspension fluid and presto instant Scorched vaccine. Then it's just a matter of waiting on my phone call about my Nobel Prize for Medicine. That's the good news. The bad news is this old symptomatic machine. I powered it on and the damn thing blew a fuse right away. Jeff thinks that there might be some Type T fuses at an old train yard nearby. Hopefully he can send someone to check it out. To hear Maria tell it, those boys in the Fire Breathers unit are itching to take the fight to the Scorched and they're counting on my inoculation to protect them. October 20th, 2096. Damn it all, so close and yet I'm stuck. Jeff's been out on forging missions pretty much around the clock, and I can't get in touch with him to request help with the blood sample or the replacement fuse. The fire breathers are almost ready for the big operation, and I've got nothing to give them. If they take on the Scorched without being inoculated first, I fear what might happen. I have to confront the possibility that I might never get the chance to finish this work. But maybe someone else can. These journal entries should serve as a guide. I'm thinking I can also rig up the symptomatic to play a message to anyone that's able to administer the inoculation once it's done. That way, if the worst happens, I can at least leave some kind of signpost to help others benefit from what we've learned. To help them survive. If maybe I don't. And November 7th, 2096. We're too late. I failed. I was on the radio with Maria just now. She's never seen so many Scorch Beasts. She said the sky above the airport's dark with them. They're not attacking. Not yet. Waiting on their Scorched foot soldiers to arrive. Maybe clever bastards. And of course, we're scraping the bottle of the barrel on ammo and stems. So this couldn't have come at a worse time. So what the hell do I do now? Down here, alone, I might eventually be able to finish this vaccine. I can't help the fire breathers anymore, but maybe someday this vaccine will save lives, assuming anyone's left. If I can make it back to the airport, I could save some lives today, or maybe tomorrow, or whenever the battle comes, and it will come. 
Crap. I can't stay here. It might be suicide trying to make the trip on my own. But I can't turn my back on everyone I care about. Not when they need me the most. Not when I'm the one who failed to play her part in the plan to stop the Scorch before it came to this. If anyone finds this, then get that blood sample, load it into the centrifuge, and run the DNA analysis program. The rest is pretty automatic. Good luck to us both. Okay, so uh, they've actually changed the way this quest works. Uh, in the past, you had to get three blood samples, and the Type T fuse was actually located not over here at this train yard, but all the way back up here at Greg's Mine Supply. Uh, the three different samples you had to get, one was from a feral ghoul, another one was from a mole rat, and another one after that was also from a wolf, because mole rats, wolves, and feral ghouls are all seemingly resistant to the Scorched Plague. Now, I think that we've gone for about a half an hour now, so we will come back next time and we will complete this quest and we will be inoculated against the Scorched Plague. This has been the Resolute Cartographer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.